Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a Fragrance Friday, and we will be exploring the entire women's fragrance line from Parfum de Marly. They're one of my all-time favorite luxury niche fragrance houses. I've been in love with Delina for years, but I don't remember smelling the rest of the line. They recently sent me a Delina replacement and a generous box of goodies, so huge thank you to Parfum de Marly, but it included this little sample box. So I have a little spray of each of the women's fragrances. So today we will go through each one. I will describe the notes, the inspiration, and then I will share my impressions on all of the fragrances. Inside the little sample box was this little pamphlet. It's a guide that takes you through all of the fragrances of the brand. So it begins with the brand story. It's complete with photos. It takes you through all of the men's fragrances. And here we have the women's fragrances. Starting with the first fragrance, we have Safinade. It looks like this glamorous, very royal gold bottle, all black exterior packaging, very pretty. It looks really fancy. So this is a floral fragrance, top notes of orange and pear, heart notes of iris, orange blossom, and then base notes of vanilla, sandalwood, and amber. I love the sound of that. Anytime a fragrance has vanilla, sandalwood, and amber, it's usually a good one. So let me take it out of my little box. First impressions, woo. Mm, here we go. Mmm. You know what's a good sign when you go in for the second spray? I was just thinking to myself, was this a smart idea to do a first impressions with fragrance? Because here I am gonna be spraying them everywhere. But this is nice. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's really nice. How come I haven't heard of this before? Oh, I'm intrigued. This is beautiful. It's kind of reminding me of the men's fragrance from Parfum de Marly that comes in the gold bottle. This one, Godolphin. Godolphin? <laughs> Godolphins. I think it's the gold one. It's the one that has honey front for the men's side is so nice. Oh my gosh. The bottle is a perfect representation of this fragrance. I said it looks really fancy, looks really regal. That's how this fragrance smells. I am honestly blown away. I'm so impressed. I didn't expect to love it so much and especially being the first fragrance, I thought it would be a slow buildup, but no, this is incredible. Okay, so next is Meliora. This is a fruity floral fragrance, top notes of raspberry, black currant, heart note of lily of the valley, rose, and lang, base notes of vanilla and musk. That sounds promising. I love rose, I love vanilla and musk. Raspberry and black currant, I'm not really familiar with, so let's see. Here we go, Melioria. Oh, Meli, Meliora, Meliora, oh my gosh. I'm gonna butcher all of these names. Okay, I'm gonna spray on this side. Ooh, here we go. Hmm. That's really nice as well. I feel like I get a lot of raspberry and black currant. Hmm. Yeah. So like that deep berry fragrance, definitely really apparent. Okay, I'm gonna stop spraying. <laughs> I still have other fragrances to try, but I really just wanna get my nose in there. Wow, that's really beautiful. This is reminding me a bit of Rose Prick from Tom Ford because it's kind of dark, you know, there's depth and it's moody, but there's rose as well. It's also kind of bringing me back to sun ripened raspberries from Bath and Body Works and that's not to knock the fragrance. Do you guys remember that fragrance? So when I was growing up, my mom was obsessed with sun ripened raspberries. We had all of the bath sets in every bathroom of our house and that was her fragrance and she loved it. My entire childhood, it was just all I can think of is sun ripened raspberries. So I'm, this is reminding me of that. Maybe this would be a good fragrance for her. I know she likes raspberry. But this is definitely the elevated, elegant version. 
This one, I think I need to wait for the dry down. I like it. It's very pretty. It's very lovely. Maybe not for me personally, maybe for my mom, <laughs> but I, I still like it. I just, I'm not wowed. But you know, with, with so many fragrances, you really have to wait for the dry down. It's getting a little bit softer. It's still very pretty. Now when I think of fruity floral fragrances, I immediately think of the Dolce & Gabbana Shine and the number three, which are really bright fruity floral, but this is a little bit sexier. This is more of an evening sensual fruity floral. Unexpected, but still really beautiful. Mm. I'm gonna revisit that. I underestimated how much fun it would be to share first impressions of fragrance. I was really nervous before we started, but now that I'm into it, I think there's something really nice about being able to share my immediate reaction of the fragrance. It's pretty cool. Okay, so next we have Darcy. Darcy looks gold, so now I'm thinking that the Safinade, that first fragrance, might actually be a yellow bottle. Darcy is a floral fragrance, top notes of bergamot and orange, so citrus burst right off the top, heart notes of rose and jasmine, I think two of the most common middle notes for a fragrance, and then base notes of wood, patchouli, praline, and musk. Wow, that sounds interesting. I don't usually love patchouli. It really depends on the fragrance. Praline, who knows what that could be. Now I'm nervous again because I'm not sure how I feel about the sound of it. Okay, ready? Hmm, it's nice, but it's, it's not for me. And I kind of had that thought. Hmm. Wait a minute now, it's starting to grow on me. Based on the description, I thought it would be nice. You know, it sounds really pretty, but not like most of the fragrances that I tend to lean towards. <sighs> of all of the patchouli fragrances that I have smelled, this is one of the best. Because I think the musk, there are some other notes in there that are really nice, it's really feminine. Wait a minute. It's changing on me, it's changing. I'm starting to really like it. What is happening? Oh my goodness. Okay, that is a fragrance that I definitely have to wear. I'm gonna wear that tomorrow. I need to make up my mind. I cannot stop smelling my hand. I am now addicted to this fragrance. When I first sprayed it, all I could smell was patchouli and that really turned me off. But now that it's sat for a while, I'm picking up all of the other notes and it's far more complex. And I think it smells like one of the most elegant fragrances I've ever smelled. Wow, that is so nice. I go back to that beautiful bottle and it truly is the perfect vessel for a fragrance like this because it is so elevated. And it's getting a bit softer. I cannot wait to wear that fragrance. That is going to be on my body tomorrow. We'll see how it wears and how it dries down after a few hours, but I love that now. How did this happen? <laughs> so far, everything has been really great. Let's flip the page. The next fragrance is Sedbury. This is the only fragrance that unfortunately did not come in the sample box, but I can still tell you what's in it. So it's a floral oriental, top notes of mandarin, bergamot, clary, sage, and lavender, heart note of Indian tuberose, iris, jasmine, sandback. Sounds really nice. Base notes of vanilla, sandalwood, amber. Ugh, the trifecta. Benzoin, patchouli, vetiver. Wow, it sounds really interesting. I wish I had it to spray, but I don't. If you have any thoughts or if you have smelled Sudbury in the white bottle, leave a comment down below so we can all share our information. This sounds like a fragrance worth revisiting and I do love the all white bottle. It's very bridal, gorgeous. 
So next on the other side of the page we have Athalia, and that I do have a little sample of. This is described as floral ambery. Top notes of incense, rose, bitter orange. Heart note of iris, suede, orange blossom, cashmere, base notes of amber, vanilla, and vetiver. Ooh, this sounds deep and moody, and it comes in an all black bottle with the gold cap. So I did both forearms and then my hand. I'm gonna try this hand. Just kind of hard just because I'm right-handed, so my left hand is weak and it's hard to spray. There we go. It's really not that spicy. It's so soft. It's kind of soft and powdery, very light. It's a very serious fragrance. It's very pretty, not something that I would probably wear, but not a bad fragrance at all. Again, it's really elegant. All of these fragrances just smell elegant. Like none of them smell like something that you would just spray on without thinking about it. You know, they're very purposeful. You're going to get dressed, get ready in the morning, and you're going to spray your fragrance with purpose, you know, very intentional. It's really lovely though. Maybe more evening appropriate. Like I feel like I want this in a body oil, something that I could put on before bed. It's very relaxing. Oh my gosh, how did this one become a favorite? <laughs> that is shocking, wow. No, it is nice. You know, compared to the other fragrances, there's almost a touch of sweetness, but it's not overly sweet either. Maybe even a candle. I would definitely light a candle of this. Mm. It's just something that makes me feel like evening, relaxing, really pretty. The last fragrance in the little booklet, and this must be older because it doesn't mention Cassili, but we will talk about that one, is of course Delina. The crown jewel, I would say, of the women's fragrance line from Parfum de Marly. A floral woody fragrance, top notes of bergamot, lychee, rhubarb, and nutmeg. Heart notes of iris, Turkish rose, patalia, vanilla, and musk. Base notes of Haitian vetiver, cedar, frankincense, and cashmere. Oh. Delina, so beautiful. I love this fragrance so much and I love the hand cream and the hair mist and I really wanna get my hands on the candle because it's just so beautiful. This one I'm gonna spray just kind of as the cherry on top of everything. Mm. It's definitely the sweetest fragrance, so feminine, really incredible. I read on their website that Delina was created to be kind of the ultimate ode to femininity, but there is a duality to it. It's kind of sweet and spicy. It's sort of floral, but then there's depth to it as well. And I think they just captured that essence beautifully. This is the most feminine, just gorgeous fragrance. Beautiful for special occasions. Of course, I do love this bottle, but again, I think the bottle really does represent the fragrance well. Mm. To this day, I have never met anyone in person who said that they did not like Delina. For the most part, anytime I've ever showed this fragrance to somebody, their reaction is, oh my gosh, what is that? That's amazing. That's the most beautiful fragrance I've ever smelled. It really does have that wow factor that you don't necessarily get from a lot of fragrances. It's captivating, and because it has some really interesting notes that you're not going to find in other fragrances, there's something that keeps you smelling the fragrance. You know, it draws you in because you're like, what is that? What can't I put my finger on? 
it's more exotic. It's not just your typical floral fragrance. Mm. I love this. You know, my husband says, that fragrance smells soapy. <laughs> and I just think, you know nothing about fragrance, how dare you? So I don't think it's his favorite, but it's my favorite. So I will continue to wear it regardless. Mm. Now let's talk about the exclusive because sometimes I get questions about this. I also like the Delina exclusive, but if I had to choose a favorite, I prefer the original Delina. I'm just gonna spray into the wind. Mm, it's really beautiful, but it's almost a little bit too powdery. It's a little bit too something. There's some note that is heightened in the exclusive fragrance that kind of takes away the nuance, I think, of the original Delina. So I prefer the original. I do like both of them. I know some people prefer the exclusive. And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it just dries down better on them. Maybe they find that it lasts longer. I love it. And if I didn't know about the original Delina, I would be in love with this and think it was the best thing on earth. It's only when I'm comparing the two head to head that I prefer the original. I still prefer this to most any other fragrance. Last but certainly not least, we have Cassilli and I just pulled up a description. So I'm gonna read you the notes. This was launched in 2019, so I think this must be their most recent fragrance on the market. Top notes are red currant and Bulgarian rose. Middle notes of plum, mimosa, frangipani, and patalia. Base notes of sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla. Ooh, I love me some tonka bean. It makes your mouth water. You have a physical reaction when you smell tonka bean. You'll often find it in men's colognes. You know when you smell a really nice smelling man and you almost start salivating at that's the tonka bean oh, i definitely got that in my eye <laughs> whoops like i need anything to ruin my vision even more mm. ah, so beautiful it's so fresh and light and playful and fun. This is the brightest fragrance of all of the fragrances that I've sprayed today. I would say Delina is second, but a lot of these fragrances are sort of serious, elegant, moody, sexy. Delina is a little bit happier. And then Cassilli is just pure joy. This is like happy, you kind of float around. It almost smells like it should be a fruity floral fragrance. Mm, it's so much fun. There's something kind of peachy to it. I don't know if I'm just associating the bottle with the fragrance, but when I smell Kazili, I smell peach. There's no peach in it, but so maybe I'm just thinking of the bottle, but it's kind of that yummy, kind of creamy, fruity, floral. So beautiful. I think this is a perfect everyday fragrance, perfect for spring, summer. Mm. It's so playful, flirtatious, and feminine, but I probably wouldn't wear this in the evenings for a date night. I would opt for one of the other fragrances. But this is kind of your pure love, joy, brunch, special occasion during the day, perhaps a garden party or a wedding, you know, all of these fanciful events that we can imagine in our heads. That's what I think of when I smell Cassilli. Oh, it's so nice. This fragrance just puts a smile on my face. It is so beautiful. Okay, let's get down to business right now. If I had to choose favorites, which is very difficult to do because this is a beautiful fragrance range. I'm so shocked because I didn't really have a lot of memories of smelling the other fragrances. I kind of always think of Delina Cassilli, but they're all incredible. There wasn't one bad fragrance. So it's going to be very difficult to narrow down favorites. But of course, I love the original Delina Cassilli. I own them, I cherish them, beautiful. Of the new fragrances, my favorite would be Darcy. I think this is more of an evening, no? I think it could be really versatile. I was gonna say evening, but I do think it's more daytime, power lunch, could be office appropriate. It's a bit stronger, so you would maybe just need to one, one spray and you're done. It's so beautiful. I love the Darcy, it's really nice. And then this first one, I'm forgetting the names. And then Safanade would be my second favorite. 
so pretty. I wonder if this bottle is gold or yellow. I'm gonna look that up. Because if it's gold, then it has to be mine. <laughs> I will definitely add it to my collection. The Darcy is gold. Mmm, smells beautiful. Oh, wow. This one is changing as well. So pretty. I really love them all. This one's a bit lighter. The Meliora is pretty light. Uh, the Athalia is gorgeous. I think this is more of a fall winter fragrance. Evening, date night, sexy. That's it. We managed to make it through the entire women's fragrance line from Parfum de Marly. And I don't know how you guys feel, but I learned so much about these fragrances. I'm incredibly impressed. I'm actually kind of overwhelmed by how beautiful they are because I don't hear people talk about some of the others as much. I think Delina gets the spotlight and then all of the others sort of fall in her shadow. But they don't belong there because they're pretty amazing and I think for the right person, each one of these fragrances is the go-to, holy grail that is like your one power fragrance. They all bring something different to the table. They're all unique, but one thing that kind of unites them all is I think they're all elevated. None of these fragrances are simple. None of them are kind of blah. They're all very special. And I think that's very difficult to do. So many fragrances kind of smell the same. You know, you go shopping for fragrances and there's a giant wall. Like you have to navigate through 50 shades of floral. You know, they're all sort of similar. And that's okay. You know, there are so many beautiful fragrances. And I love floral fragrances. That's not to knock more popular fragrances because this is a niche brand. You know, you're not going to find them everywhere. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Elevated price point. But, but I think when you consider just how unique they are in that wow factor, it justifies the price point because it is special. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you feel inspired now and informed. If you were looking at Perfume de Marly, perhaps trying to figure out which of the women's fragrances would be right for you, hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, your questions down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have a favorite or if any of these scents sound interesting to you, drop me a comment. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything today on my face, down below in the description box and that's always for your convenience and for more videos like this don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell